everybody, welcome to Space Explorers here on Cam and Seb. I'm Cam, and instead of Seb, uh, for this video, we've got Lewis Dartnell. And Lewis, you're going to be here with us for the whole series, right? Yes, we are doing this Space Explorers project with the UK Space Agency. Yes. Using computer games to explore some of the science behind space exploration and getting in some of the world's experts to tell us about it. And who is this expert? <laughs> a world expert. Okay, sorry, world expert. Um, I'm Dr. Matthew Baum. I'm a planetary geologist. I spend most of my time looking at the surface of Mars, trying to work out the geology, how that geology got to be the way it is. What's your favourite thing on the surface of Mars, Matt? Well, that's a good question. I think my favourite things are little tiny things called gullies, which Ooh. are formed probably by liquid water flowing down the surface of Mars. OK, well, um, the reason we have you in the studio today is we're going to be looking at the science of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Can warfare be infinite, Matt? <laughs> I, I think, yeah, space is infinite. So, so uh, why not? Um, you know, All right. fill it full of war. Video so. done. Our next video. No, um, so we will actually be doing two videos with Matt, though. The first one is, you know, we're going to be going through the game and talking about different points in the game and, and the science of that and maybe why the game makers have done things not accurate to real life for fun reasons. But then we're going to have a second video where it's going to be a QA. and a We've collected a bunch of your questions for Matt, and I'll just be throwing them at you relentlessly. <laughs> Lee and Seb will be here for that Quick as well. So, style. yeah, we've got we've got a lot of a lot of science and video gaming ahead. So, uh, let's crack into it. Okay, so Matt, the uh, the story behind this infinite warfare in this video game is that uh, it's that kind of standard trope of Earth has ran out of resources and mankind has spread across our solar system and started to colonize Mars and you know various moons like Europa and our moon and all these various other places. Okay. So that's that's the premise, um, and this is the intro movie here. We can see this game comes complete with uh, spaceships that seem to be able to blast between the planets quite easily. Okay. Um, we're, we're, oh, it's your favorite. It's Mars. Yeah, this is Mars. This I can is see your, it See, that, that is Valles Marineris, which mm -hmm. is like a massive, massive valley, huge sort of rift in the planet's crust, and it looks like it's full of um, little lights. Cities, which gets the it's cities, yeah, that's, yeah. that's amazing. So I would love to go to What's Mars. nice is seeing the, the kind of sunlight glinting around oh, the horizon of Mars there as well. And here's some spaceships, and you know what that is? That is a space elevator. I bet you that's a space elevator uh, there in the background. And what, what do you use a space elevator for? It's a, it's a really cheap and easy way to get into space. So um, um, in what way? Basically, rather than boosting up with rockets, you just basically look, there's a, there's an elevator car there riding oh, yeah. riding up the elevator, taking stuff up into a into a position where it's basically in orbit for free almost. So, so you, you don't have to worry about all that pesky atmosphere and no, blasting just through. Just pay the electricity well, costs for, for a rockets. long long elevator, right? Yeah, and you have to build the thing. So that, that could be a bit tricky as well. So normally people want to anchor it to Phobos or something like that, which is one of the moons of Mars. The warfare that's going on in this basically. You know, it's people, infinite, yeah. It's infinite, right? Yeah. We got that bit down. And some people stayed on Earth, and some people left Earth. And the people who left Earth, That's a lot these of guys... They wow. had a bit of a falling out. They've had, they're been a, they're no, some, not so much friends anymore. There's been a tiff. I don't know. <laughs> some people borrowed something and didn't return it, or something like that. And, uh, yeah, there's now this kind of war that's going on. And the first mission uh, begins right next to Jupiter. That's a lovely, it's a lovely graphic That's the great Jupiter red spot there. of Jupiter. Yeah. So what, what is that? A giant storm. It's been going on for thousands of years, probably. Ah. So... You know, not like storms on Earth that last, ooh, I don't know, a few weeks. That's one's been a does, lot longer. Does it like grow and shrink the red spot, or is it kind of use, it's kind of? Yeah, well, it's shrinking at the moment, isn't it? They're not yeah, quite sure bit. what's going on yeah. with it. this huge hurricane system. It seems to be shrinking in size. These guys should put a spacesuit on, I reckon, because well, they're going to get. Well, there you go. All right, visor, space visor. That's all they've got. Just a visor. Well, this is. Uh, so this oh. is Europa. We've now all arrived, right. at, isn't it? This is one of the icy moons of Jupiter. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is where the first uh, the first mission begins. But so while I get ready to leap down towards the surface of Europa, and we can talk a bit about that. Um, so we just saw Mars there, Matt. So tell me a bit more about what it is that you do with Mars. So um, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm trying to uh, work out where the best place to land the ExoMars rover. So this is going to ah. go in 2020, and its mission is to is to search for life. So it's it's actually to go onto the surface, search for life, and there's kind of a competition going on at the moment, and that competition is to basically find the uh, the best place to land. And there's three sites still in contention. Mm -hmm. I lead one that's called Aram Dawson or Awesome Dawson, as we call it. <laughs> and, uh, and they say scientists aren't cool. Yeah. So I mean, you've, you've been your your day job is literally to help map other worlds. You're, yeah. you're kind of extraterrestrial cartographer, which, as far as I'm concerned, is about the best job description that, that I've ever heard. I brought you to Europa here. Oh, great. Um, so it's not Mars, I'm afraid, but uh, this is how uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has, has given us Europa. So you can see, complete with ice. So is icy this, surface, yeah, which seems to make sense for Europa. Okay. But I'm not so sure about the wind. 
blowing in the kind of no, I, snowflakes in the air and the clouds. There's not this really is much of an atmosphere not. on Europa, so that's a little unrealistic. But um, but you can see Jupiter, so you would definitely be able to see Jupiter. And, and very big in the sky, because yep. Europa w- orbits very close oh, yeah. to it. You would be really close. It would be the most spectacular thing, actually. Um, if I was going to Europa, though, I wouldn't want to be mucking around on the, on the surface. I, mean, so I want to go underneath, because there might surf- be an ocean underneath the surface. Ah. Maybe... It could be kilometres, it could be tens of kilometres under the surface. Okay. And, the, and the cool thing for me is that if we go there, we might find life in that ocean. Is, so. is the surface of Europa, is that a pretty hostile place to be where we are right now? I would oh, say so. It, it certainly is in terms well, of the radiation. I, Something is, I just died. So, you froze to death. So there you go. You it is pretty, pretty hostile. You're far from the sun and it's quite cold. I didn't, I didn't even plan that. Get, get That's your just the thing that happens. On. I have to say, right. these, these guys mm. need to be wearing slightly better protective clothing. Yeah. So they are looking like they're going to get chilly, very cold. Well, and it's really, really, really cold out. And there. one of the other problems with the surface of Europa is it orbits deep within the radiation belt of Jupiter. You you'd be dead within seconds. Let's get under the surface. Let's descend into the. He's, uh, he's in. So we're falling down one of these crevasses. He's got a knife oh, no. in the surface. All right, so we've landed down here now. Um, but this this looks interesting. It's all we just fell down. Is that is that being drilled or? What, I, what I reckon it's kind of melted down. It looks like there's some machine that has got really hot and melted down into the ice. And that's actually kind of what we would do oh, if we really? were going to drill down through the, the surface of Europa yeah. to get to the interesting ocean underneath so we can test it, look for life. Uh-huh. We'd have to we'd you know we'd have to melt our way down. We wouldn't be able to to drill it. This is how uh, oh, it's this pretty, is the inside it? of Europa. It's yeah. very pretty. I mean it, it, and it is water ice on Europa, is that correct? Yeah is... some of it's water ice, yeah. So cool. Because I think that's what, certainly what this looks like. The surface will be normal <coughs> water ice, would be kind of ice one as we call it. Yeah. But depending on how deep that ocean is and how high the pressure gets to the bottom, people speculate about there being kind of exotic forms of ice on the seafloor and then some of Jupiter's other moons as well. Yeah, it does, it does depend on the pressure and the temperature. But... Ah, and I can confirm, guys, you don't need to bother going to Europa. <laughs> there is life on there is Europa, life. Yeah. and it is soldiers with big guns. Cool. And like there's some layering in the ice. That, that might be yeah, the sort yeah. of thing you might be able to see. So that's quite yeah, pretty. Layering in the ice. And I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing you're looking for with, with the Mars rovers, isn't it? You're looking yeah, for exactly, layers yeah. of sediment, layers of, of, of strata in the rocks and what you can learn from them. Yeah, well, what we want to find on Mars is some um, really ancient... Uh, sedimentary rocks, so little tiny pieces of uh, silt or sand that have been washed there by water, and that's uh, that's a good environment for life. So, and then with the ExoMars rover, try to drill down into them. We, we've got a, a two-meter drill on Absolutely. board ExoMars. Absolutely, yeah, that's the thing that differentiates ExoMars from the other rovers. It's got a, a drill two meters beneath the surface, so it gets away from the today's Martian environment, which is really hostile, not very good place to live. So, if you can drill all the way down two meters below the surface, that's about the point where you can, you know, start to you know, look for signs of ancient life, things we call biomarkers, different chemical signatures mm-hmm. or physical signatures. All right, we've left Europa behind and we've skipped on a few missions. We're back on Earth and there's been a huge attack. Uh, this warfare really is infinite. But don't worry, because we have Ethan, who is a robot. A oh, friendly robot um, soldier. What do you think of this guy? What? He, he appears to have monocular vision. He's only got one eye, but... Terrible depth perception. Yeah, you but, need but, that when shooting but, things, actually, surely. Actually, it looks like he's got like a mirror there. So maybe it's like a, a LiDAR, because we can... That's kind of a laser that scans. Uh-huh. You use the mirror to sort of scan these little dots really quickly. And, and you can, can time it. the echo, don't you? It's almost like, right. like sonar, but with light. Yeah, oh, it's so almost like a form of tra- of like uh, precision tracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it builds up sort of a 3D model of uh, what's around you. And we, we actually use that in the field for, for scanning huh. landscapes that we're going to compare with Mars. So Ethan is a bit like our... He's a scientist. Yeah, lay, lay off him on his single eye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. He's a lot a bit better than you are. I have he's, got your back. He's, he's a lot heavier arms than our, yeah. our laser scanner. Yeah, so. <laughs> you mean you haven't equipped yours with an automatic rifle? Yeah, I wouldn't want to go near ours if it looked like well, don't so, worry. Ethan's coming in, coming with us because we're gonna hop into our spacecraft here, and I, I want to get your impression on how we get into space here. Because you must think a lot about, you know, if, if you're thinking about mapping Mars and getting equipment to Mars, you must think a lot about getting through the Earth's atmosphere and how to do that best. It's it's expensive is the thing that we worry about most because mm-hmm. um, you've got to get all that mass out of out of Earth's gravity, and that requires a lot of rocket fuel. Which and itself has mass, which exactly, is kind of part of the problem, yeah. isn't it? So uh, yeah. it's uh, it's really bad news trying to lift off out of Earth orbit. It looks like it's pretty bad news for some of these guys as well. They're, They're really laboring on, their, on their rocket thrusters. There's just been a so. huge attack, and I think we're about to chase these ones here. Right, so okay. um, so we're about to launch straight upwards, um, priming something called the Jackal, which I guess is our super duper engine, or maybe our rocket booster on the back. Oh, look, there we and go. ready to launch? Cool. Let's go! Mm. And we're off. So you can see. So you've got, you've got the speed on the on the right hand side, exactly. haven't we? What's that? Seven thousand kilometers an hour. So you and need to be we... up to twenty five thousand, I think, for escape that's, velocity. That's escape velocity. And right. we've also got the, G, wow, the G's. Wow, we're getting. I think <laughs> I think we're putting more G's than that, frankly, because that seems like 
a very, very rapid acceleration speed. This is probably more like 20 Gs. Oh, so wow. we're blacked out now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So I think like fighter pilots can pull kind of 8, 9 Gs for a very short period of time with special suits on yeah, to, to squeeze, their, squeeze their blood back up into their brain. So really yeah. our vision should have narrowed to a point and then we would have blacked out, correct? Well, I, ah. I reckon going to 40,000 kilometers an hour in about 10 seconds, that's pretty That's pretty high. But and now you, we're in space. But did you right. notice the uh, the boosters fell off the back of our oh. ships here? So that's how that's where our fuel is coming from. There was a separate okay. booster rocket. Well, and we're now at naught Gs. We're now essentially weightless. We're now uh, free-floating in, in low Earth orbit. So d- was, does it take a lot longer to get through the atmosphere than that? Because that seemed yeah, quite quick. Yeah, that seemed minutes. really quick. Yeah, it's of the order of sort of six or seven minutes, yeah. I think. Maybe oh, even longer. missiles. Incoming missiles. missiles. This is not that's good. bad. Yeah. So that's oh. okay. Can't our, our robot guy take these out instead? Well, robot guy, I don't know what he's doing. He's I'm, in the I'm, back I'm, making a cup of tea. I think, I think so. Saying. I'm doing everything. So basically, I'm going to try and shoot these guys down. But All right. I'm really. I was playing this earlier, and I was. There's a lot of explosion. Obviously, there's a lot of sound. So <laughs> let's start with the big one. So there's a lot of sound in this game in space. Well, you, you might you might get um sounds if things hit the the cockpit. Because you know, you, you, there's, there's there's atmosphere inside, inside the cockpit, yeah. so the kind of pitter patter of, of debris hitting yeah, your windscreen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, explosions—they're not going to make any sound. But you know, I guess if you were, I don't know, if you were some advanced, you know, computer system for for combat, you'd kind of want the explosions to to register, wouldn't you? I mean, like you—it's well, another way of getting information to the pilot. Exactly. Yeah. So you could give three-dimensional they, they sounds where things are happening. Fake sounds in because that would be kind of useful. You know, to know that. When you're shooting your guns, it's going. Boop, 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 boop. What about so, all this fire? Would yeah, what do you, you think of the explosions? Are these, like are these realistic? So obviously, I mean, maybe this could that be like atmosphere is oxygen escaping from the craft here, yeah, and it's yeah. uh, bulging out in flame. Like, is, is that possible? Yeah, or? I mean, you, you can certainly get things to burn in zero gravity. You just need uh, fuel and an oxygen hmm. or, or an oxidizer. So you know, things can explode in space, but they just can't burn like they do on Earth. You can't really have fires because hmm. you, you need a lot of oxygen. So if you've got a sort of a spout of oxygen gushing out of the inside of the uh, spacecraft. You could have fires burning from there. So, and what about these explosions? When I'm very skillfully, I might yeah, add, shooting skillful. down these impressive. bad guys. It is on the easiest <laughs> level. Um, as you see, it's quite a brief little. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. It just goes poof, and and they're snubbed out. Oh, cool. And here's here's Earth. Um, so we're looking at. Do you recognise is- where we are? Is this the coast of uh, Africa somewhere? Yeah. Uh, oh no, is that yeah? That's North Africa. That's the Mediterranean. Yeah. There's Gibraltar. You're aiming at Gibraltar. Oh yeah, take that, uh, Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> this is the message from Spain. That's, uh, that's ten monkeys that you've just <laughs> taken out in one go. <laughs> uh, oh wait, so this is Africa here, and yep. this is this would be uh, Europe. Oh yeah, yeah, and Spain, up Portugal, here. Yeah. Where, where's, okay. where's Britain? Can we fly I'm under the cloud? Sea obviously, <laughs> <laughs> it's under that great big water white cloud. cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're kind of trapped in the location that we are oh. in right now. You can't just keep flying in one direction. No. But what time is it, Matt? Based on the position of this? No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. <laughs> so we've lost all our buddies as well. They've gone off. And oh, no, there they are. Oh, no, no. They're I'm, off I'm, completing I'm the mission. I'm just going AWOL. <laughs> yeah. I'm, we're talking about science. It's more important than all this, all this war. There's lots of debris now. So that's good. And it's, I don't think it would just be hanging around like that. I think the debris would be going off at all sorts of crazy orbits. So mm, they would have some it. sort of velocity, right? Um, I'm, I, I guess the big thing we haven't talked about is that the speed that all this is is happening. You know, we're dogfighting, yeah, yeah. but it looks almost like it it does when you know when you when you fly around uh, in in an atmosphere. Oh god, I'm being killed. Ah. Um, so <laughs> w- is this what a dogfight in space would be like, do you think? Um, well, I'm not, about not having been in a dogfight in space, but what? No, um, but again, I, was, I guess I kind of looking at the physics of it, like changing direction of space is really yeah, difficult. Exactly, you can't yeah. use a rudder. You can't. No, yeah. I can't mean, this is fly the thing. through I mean, the air. But I mean, they've, they've got to make it fun, though. I mean, if it was like just, you know, you have to fly along and you're going such vast relative speeds that you only see the enemy for like a split second, and then you have to spend. I don't know, 30 seconds it would turning be a around. Slow paced it would game, be a really boring <laughs> game. So, so it, turning so, is the issue in space, is it? Well, yeah, it's changing direction because you know you have to push against something. So in the terrestrial atmosphere on Earth, you push against the atmosphere using your your wings or your tail of your of your aeroplane. Mm-hmm. Um, but but here there's nothing to push against, so you have to use thrusters. So you have to basically turn the whole ship around and then give yourself enough acceleration back the other way to cancel out the the speed you've got if you want to turn 180, for example. I see. So it's um. You know, it's going to be kind of boring if uh, if the game was just like that. So I think I think this is really cool. It's, it's fun. That was quite a that glorious awesome. explosion. That was a good explosion. That was a capital ship going and up. Things are yeah. things, things are things should be going away. faster. Yeah. Thing. I, yeah. I think things should be whizzing past you and probably destroying you. Take, the, uh, taking you out with a shotgun <laughs> blast of yeah, the debris. Yeah. Exactly. If a bit Gosh, of that hits you, you're done for, aren't you? So done for. Yeah. Okay, so we blasted apart the fleet, and now we're going to land on a ship and do some. We're going to uh, board them. 
what do you call it when you're outside space doing missions? Doing yeah, an EVA? E- EVA, yeah. EVA? We're going to get do yeah, like yeah. A, a combat EVA. Extravehicular activity. Ah, this we come in. I love, I love that kind of debris feel that you're flying through. You get a yeah, real sense of good. depth and yeah. space. Uh, alley oop. Whoa, we're, we're out. Oh, here we go. He's swimming. So, so floating around, we're floating around in, in zero gravity. It's a really nice aspect of the game, this bit, isn't yeah. it? So you've got a grapple gun, which you can use to... Oh, but it doesn't throw you backwards. It should throw you backwards when you fire it. <laughs> I guess it does come with quite a lot of force, but if no. You, if you fire your gun, do you Ow. start drifting backwards? Well, you'll, you'll drift backwards slowly. So if you've oh, got like a so machine like... gun and you keep pumping out, then you uh, should get backwards a bit. Yeah. Doesn't seem to be. So you that's, might, that's, you that's might like rotate energy, a bit as That's well. an energy weapon. This is definitely a machine gun, so let's fire right. this. Yeah, are we? Are we? Well, I guess we're s- kind of we're booted onto the uh, onto the deck. At the well, let's see. Let's see, we? let's see if I can go. No, we're where yeah, Let's see if I can go up. No, no, we're not really going seem up. to be doing much. But the big Same. thing here is we're, we're we're firing bullets in space. Does that work? I think that works. Yeah. yeah is there any reason why bullets can can do well, no, damage? Because, uh, the bullet's got its own uh, propellant yeah, and an oxygen. Exactly, yeah. So you just uh, you make a little explosion and it zings off down the hole and probably goes straight for basically ever until it gets yeah, distracted if I, if I by shoot, gravity. So those bullets I'm shooting up here, they're just going to kind of go forever. If you shoot them towards the Earth, they'll um, probably go into the they'll Earth. Ah, little, they'll little probably, shooting stars. Yeah, they'll probably burn up in the atmosphere. So I see. But, uh, yeah, the ones you shoot into the enemy soldiers, they will they will make a hole in them. They will make a hole. Mm. Now, the... We're ca- we're, we're seem to be able to move around. We're, we're not tethered right now, but we seem to be able to float around. Do you have boosters or something? I think that, we yeah, must have a little thrusters on our. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm looking at my, my pal over here. My soldier but it would be buddy. really hard to do that in reality because, like, you know, if it, they'd have to be in the in your center of gravity, so you'd have to be really well balanced because, like. If it was slightly off, you'd end up rotating, and then you'd be upside down and, and whizzing and around. And feeling around. sick, and also not getting shot at. That'd be yeah. a bad day. It, it would, yeah. Not for people with motion sickness. So yeah. those people who have to sit in the front of your car. <laughs> no, no, I've got motion <laughs> don't, sickness. Don't send them I've got space. motion sickness. You know, I can't read in the back. Oh, so how, yeah, how do we get how do we get on board this the ship? Well, we're going we, we go, to we're going through the door. We're going to need to cause some Ooh. explosive decompression. Oh, that means breaking a hole in it yeah. yeah so here it says breach oh yeah i managed to do that without killing a single person i'm the best That's pacifist good. soldier ever is there a pacifist option uh no okay. <laughs> not, 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 that I know not in this game maybe there is a secret pacifism option okay so uh we're gonna well, breach here i'm gonna put an explosive device so, <clears throat> yeah somehow oh, no, no, no. we opened the the windows so it's glass oh, that, yeah. that was badly timed from their part wasn't it yeah, opening up their so armor just to be try to break is, is that kind of what we would expect to window. see from an explosive yeah, decompression yeah I think there? all the stuff that was in has got a lot higher pressure because yeah. outside obviously is zero pressure it's basically a vacuum and all that stuff will just get sucked out so or rather it'll rush out as the air zooms out with it it's not really sucking it but as soon as they sealed that up there they seem to uh, gravity seems to have come back uh yeah. Well, that must be one of these sci-fi things, you know, this advanced gravity producing machines that they have. It, we, don't ha- we don't have that yet. So, so people so. do talk about having artificial gravity for near-term future Mars missions, don't but, they, with rotating... Yeah, that's, it's not really gravity. It's just sort of the acceleration of the, of the rotating yeah. spinning thing. But it's a good idea. I think it's the way forward because we don't really want to be in zero gravity no. for six well, it's months at a time. bad for your heart and your skeleton and your muscles. Pretty bad for everything, so... Well, that'd be really cool fun to start with. I suppose you could go into the middle, couldn't you? You could go yeah, into the middle of the rotating yeah. bit and have zero gravity sports and whatnot. Zero gravity sports, yeah. I'd, <laughs> I'd like to do those. Okay, well, that is the science of Call of Duty in one video. Well, of, of those three sections, little little bits. Did of you it. have a Did you have a favourite bit, Lewis? I like the Europa bit. I uh, I liked the diving down that crevasse to get uh, beneath the crust. And I really like the, the lighting effects, the kind of like gleaming and glinting off the ice. I'm afraid we didn't actually manage to go to Mars in the, in the game. That's good. Um, Europa was really cool. Okay. So I, you're I'd like to go to Mars anyway, aren't you? You're looking at all the I time. I don't think you can get bored of Mars. <laughs> no? It's too exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, thank you so much for, uh, for playing That's with right. Call of Duty with us there. Really enjoyable. Um, but if you want more from Matt, don't worry, because we've got a whole second video which you can go and watch on Cam and Seb right now. Basically, we throw all of your questions at Matt and see how he survives. Some clever questions, some irreverent questions. It's going to be great. And thank you so much, Lewis. We'll see you, thank you. For on the next episode yeah. of Space Explorer. See you next time. Bye-bye.